This is Chef Walter Stape. Today, I'm cooking with superfoods. Superfoods are ingredients that have been scientifically proven to improve your health, and in many instances, reverse illnesses. They're easy to find and use and delicious. My recipes are fast, easy, and heart healthy. Eating well is not about avoiding foods. It's about eating the right foods. So join me in cooking with superfoods. I have used avocado in many of the segments of the show, but this one here is a triple to avocado. The first thing we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to make a very easy avocado, kind of a gazpacho, if you will. It's a vari variation of many different ingredients that you can just really easy hand chop, or you can put it in a food processor. Again, no right, no wrong. I just take some cucumber here, and uh, I prefer the European kind, seedless, because it's a little easier to work with. And then what I'll do, I make this really unorthodox, you're gonna see in a moment. I have a vegetable stock already I made earlier and have it put in the, uh, have it put in the refrigerator or in the freezer, it gets cold. So we put it in a moment. So cucumber, just like so. Obviously, there's a lot of people that will challenge you when you say you're making a gazpacho, because everybody thinks the gazpacho is only one way. Gaspacho is a million ways you can do it. There's no one right or wrong way. Absolutely not. So here I have some tomatillos that uh, are also really, really nice to have and good to eat. Tomatillos, let me get them off. I put tomatillos in mine, I put tomatoes in mine, I put red onions in mine, I obviously have cilantro in mine, and I have some pepper in mine, really easy. So this one's here, I'm just gonna chop it down like so. I'm gonna chop them right up. Avocados actually contain more potassium than the bananas. Hard to believe, some people don't, don't believe that, it's a fact. 60% more, imagine that. Get another one over here. Tomatillos is a, in the family, has absolutely nothing to do with tomatoes. <laughs> just, people think it's a tomato, it's not. Tastes also differently, but makes a spectacular salsa. That's for sure. Tomatillo is like, it has a, almost like a cucumber feel to it, with very little acid. Works extremely well, in, as I said, in salsas. And uh, tastes like a, almost like a cucumber, if you will. Here we go, we don't need much more than that. Okay, one, two, three. Then we got to do our cucumber here. Cucumber, we just take it down. And the same thing over here, we just go and uh, chop it up. And you can't obviously use a food processor with it, no question about it. So if you would take all the ingredients that I'm doing right now, and throw it all together into a food processor, you can do it. It's not really, it, it doesn't look as good later in the bowl, but you can. And also, in the European cucumbers that I'm using, you can take the whole cucumber, the whole cucumber because you have no seed, they're seedless. Now, cucumbers is a great way to uh, fill up your, uh, your belly because they are high in water and uh, they fill you up. Then tomato. Some gazpachos use tomato, some don't use tomato. I haven't used tomato in mine, so let me get this organized here. And it's because I will, every recipe I make on the superfood show, obviously I'm trying to incorporate as much as possible of superfoods into it, as you can imagine. So tomato naturally this time of year, tough to find, other times better. So here we go, just chop it down a little bit. And same thing here, just a bit dice, and again, Food processor, no problem. Here we go. And because I leave the skin on my tomatoes, many people peel the skin off, and I think it's a mistake, because it's proven that the nutrients are below it. 
So a serrated knife will be the trick. Pepper, any pepper will go. Red pepper, green pepper, any pepper in there. I happen to like red pepper in mine, same thing, just slice it down. And then I have uh, some fresh cilantro right there. And I also have cilantro already in the tubes. So all I got now here, and all I gotta do, have the cilantro that's already here. Beautiful, chopped it up a little bit. Coarse chop. There we go. And you cannot make a gazpacho without cilantro, but what you can do, you can buy the cilantro already made, and it works the same way, so you don't have to even look for that. I have some uh, green onion, and we're gonna just chop the green onion a little bit, just the green part of it. No salt, no butter, and just a lot of beauty. All we gotta do now is get the avocado into it, and the red onion, and we are in business. Now, when you make that, and you let it sit up for a while, you wanna be careful with the uh, when the red onion goes in it, because the red onions has a tendency to spoil your uh, your plate there, so you will be careful on that. All right. Red onion, coarse chop for that, because it's gonna be, should be almost the same dimension as the other vegetable that we put in there. So we can do that. And just like half an onion be perfect. And garlic, here we go. Garlic, and now comes the most important part, obviously, and this is the avocado. We want to take a really ripe one for that. Perfect. The riper, the better for this particular recipe. Because I really want the avocado to kind of disintegrate. Take the avocado off, do the same thing. You see we done before. I just put my finger underneath here, get it loose. Same thing over here. Okay. When you use avocado, leave the seed in them, they don't discolor on you. There we go. And I don't want to put more in there than like uh, three thirds of an avocado. A quick chop, because it's gonna fall apart some more. All I gotta do now is get my vegetable stack that I made earlier and put it in the freezer to get cold. This is such a straightforward vegetable stack. If the vegetable stack would be hot, it would ruin the rest of flavor of your uh, of your gazpacho. But remember, this is a gazpacho that kind of looks more as a relish than it looks like a, a gazpacho you see in many other places. You can also use, and I'm not recommending it, but you could use uh, like ready-made uh, vegetable juice that you sell already. Not recommended by me, however. Here we go. I got a little pepper flake in there. I have some regular pepper. And now we're gonna let it sit up for a little bit. And come later. And remember again, no salt, no butter on the set. So I have to really make sure that I work with a lot more ingredients. I'm gonna put some little cilantro in here and a little bit of pepper from them because it's so much easier to work. And what's fun about that, you keep it in your refrigerator and it has a long shelf life. And it's just great. A little bit of that. Here we go. Let's get it a taste. I mean, look, look at that. When it sits up for a little bit, the stuff gonna marry itself a little more and the flavors will just be in harmony. Oh, oh boy, that is really good. All right, let's concentrate next on the Pacific Rim Salad, which is really a simple salad that you cannot believe. Starts off with some dishes that are easy. Broccoli, I already pre-blanched. I have some edamame, put a handful in there. Edamame is a superfood, as we already know, it's because it's dynamite. I have some quinoa, not a superfood, already in there. I have yogurt in there, a little bit of curry. Pacific Rim comes to it because I don't know why necessarily, but it's one of the salads because it uses shrimp that are everywhere, but it uses pineapple. And the pineapple is in there now. For this particular presentation, what I normally do, I just cut the pineapple in wedges. Because again, one of the things that I like to do in our superfood show, keep our portion sizes down as well. So look at this gorgeous, oh, this pineapple is absolutely spectacular, I'll tell you that. So what I do with that is I just take it, trim the top down a little bit. That is an unbelievable source of natural sugar. Here we go, look at it, there's a wedge there, it smells unbelievable. And then what I do, 
I cut this out and then I go into it. Pineapple buying is an art and uh, I've been looked at many times funny in a grocery store when I sniffed a pineapple. <laughs> People say, what are you doing? You can smell it. You can smell the sweetness to the pineapple. So here I got, I just take the pineapple in big chunks, just chop it up like that. And then now what you can do, if you on a budget and you want to be making the salad and impress your neighbors, but you don't want to spend a ton of money, I have beautiful shrimps already cooked. Those are U8s, means there's eight to a pound. And I just cook them really clean, no salt, no nothing, just a little bit of stock. And what you can do, you can just cut them in half, like I'm gonna do today, and put them on top of the, your salad. Or you can take smaller ones and just chop them up and mix it under the salad. I'd like the presentation better, the way I'm gonna do mine. You're gonna see it in two seconds. Shrimp is naturally high in mineral, and I mean, it's a great, a great source of uh, protein as well. So here I go. All I'm gonna put in there is a little bit of uh, Soy, just a little bit. Some pepper to put in there. Maybe a little bit more yogurt could go in there. And yogurt is not a superfood. A little bit more to just give a little bit more things and a tad more little curry. And maybe the curry and the soy and the pineapple is where it gets its name from. I didn't name the salad. It's just one of the recipes I've been making for a long time. I have a little bit of a radicular leaf. I put the pineapple like that and I'm gonna put the the salad as the base. Here we go. Like so. And then I take my shrimp and lay the shrimp right on top. So let's put this over here. Let's go to the next recipe we're making, which is actually so easy. Many times people go to a restaurant and they wonder the price of crab meat. Crab meat is very expensive, especially if you buy a good one. This happens to be super lump that I use exclusively in my restaurant. And super lump means, take a look, it's just super lump, it's the word. That's why my crab cakes are the best crab cakes to be eaten and found. Look at that, it's spectacular. Now, crab doesn't have mercury, but it's packed, pre-packed, so you know what it has, right? A little bit of sodium, not a lot. Low in calories too, but like I said, it has already sodium built into it. So all you want to do there, there is a million recipes to make a crab salad. And there has to be. I mean, I put some red peppers in mine. Just chop it really quick. Fine dice. It goes so simple, especially the way we make ours, that it's almost, uh, it would be a shame to put more stuff into it. The only thing I need is my dill, little celery rib, little red onion, little vinegar, little oil, and done. So celery rib, same thing. Just cut it up. Quick chop. When you go to many places and you have a crab salad, it's made with uh, mayonnaise, obviously. Here, in superfoods, we're staying away from those things. Celery goes in, red onion next, and a little bit of oil, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, and pepper, and you're in business here. Look at that. There we go. A little bit of uh, vinegar. Just a little bit. Just a tad of oil, really. More than that. Tad of oil. Good amount of pepper. Remember, no salt, no butter. And superfood, so we make up with other ingredients to get some good flavor to it. If you want a little heat, I put a little pepper in there, so it gives some extra heat. Mix the whole thing up, and this is so fresh, and so, oh, and so delicious. All you need is the, the dill in there. Look at that. Now, you could put more peppers into it. Red pepper, yellow pepper, any kind of pepper would work. And then the dill, just chop a little bit down. Here we go. And now, to play this baby, we're gonna do something very simple. For this one, I would use a more firm avocado, if you can get it, because uh, this one here, you wanna just really just take the seed out. Perfect avocado. I'll need some little bit of uh, 
little ortiga over here, and I have a little romaine. You know, avocado, everybody knows it's full of fat, but it's the healthy fat, the fat that you really want, that lowers your cholesterol with this under plate, like so, very simple. Most uh, foods that have this kind of uh, triplets are meats. It's the only food that has the oil, so that's why avocados have become so popular. Look at that, really simple. I mean, it just doesn't get simpler than that, but it's beautiful, it's fresh, it's beautiful, just like so. To me, sometimes simplicity is just beautiful. When things get overworked, or too many things incorporated, not good. It's a great lunch, it's great to entertain. It's an easy little, uh, voila, really simple. And now we got one more thing to do quick, and this is our corn, corn relish, kind of a in between. I, the corn I already cooked. Now this one I would just cook in water. Many times I use corn and I put it in, in on the grill. This one just in water here. No salt in the water, and it doesn't need salt. Just chop it down. Here we go. And basically all I'm doing with that is I'm gonna add some tomato, some red onion, some pepper some vinegar, and obviously some avocado. And this would be kind of like, in my book, like a little side dish. Hot. And we do that here very simple. I get this question all the time, and I see it in the grocery store. When people don't know they buy avocados green, they say, oh, they're gonna ripen like a, like a potato, uh, like a tomato, I mean, not necessarily so. You can touch the avocado, you can tell. Here we go, with the corn in here. Here we go, and some red onion over here. A little more red onion. Okay, and a little onion in this one here, it's enough. Good avocado, want to know how to buy it when it's properly ripe? You can feel it. This one, for this particular one, I would like to have one that is super ripe. Like super food, super ripe. Why? Because I want the avocado to become almost like a little puree. And it's kind of like, it's perfect though. So the same thing again. I just taken it up. You could actually just scoop it out as well for this one. Because you're going to just chop it down. And then what you, the liquid you put into it is the vinegar, a little oil, and the tomato. And ready to spoon it out. And then we have to concentrate on the gazpacho, make sure that the flavor is right on the gazpacho. So here we go. Chop it. Quick chop. That's all you need for that. And now is the important part. Oh man, this smells so good over here. This crap salad, you wouldn't even believe it. Let me get over and get the... Uh, all right. Like I said, you don't have to put, you don't have to put a tomato into it. I just like the tomato part of it, so I have my tomato here. I'm gonna slice a few slices down. It's colorful and it's part of superfoods. As you find out in the show that I'm incorporating as much of the superfoods I can possibly get in a recipe, but I'm not overworking it either. I make sure the recipe stays as close to its concept than just putting superfoods into it. Here we go, that's our vinegar. And we have some cilantro. Cilantro over here. Okay, and cilantro. I have a little bit of parsley already from the same concept, which is just so labor saving and money saving. It's not even funny. A little bit of chili pepper with some heat. A little bit of uh, regular ground pepper. Gotta make sure I make a taste of that, make sure it's okay. Remember, no salt, no salt, no butter, no cream, none of those things, no mayonnaise, none of that stuff. Therefore, we have to incorporate different spices and herbs to make our stuff taste good. Look at that, it's beautiful already. You get a taste of that. Mm. 
Avocado has potassium, vitamin C. Mm. Oh man, it's so fresh because the corn just came a little out of water, came right in there, the tomato. I mean, it's like, and I just put in little side glasses to be a little whimsical. Now this one doesn't need no decoration at all because it's beautiful and it's own. And the avocado, this one here, is just a perfect ripeness. And the corn, when you taste it, the corn is nice and crunchy. All right, now we gotta concentrate on our gazpacho. And you wanna make sure it gets sits up. By sitting up meaning it's gotta sit for a while. Now, could you put it in a food processor? Absolutely, as I already said. I happen to like mine this way, why? Because I wanna see the ingredients of it. This one makes it good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Two. This is a salad in a soup combination. And here I'm gonna put it right in my bowl. Oh yeah. That is so healthy, I mean that screams. It just screams to me. Screams, eat me. Okay, one second. Clean the plate here. I got a sprig of uh, dill on the side. And then I'm gonna top it off with yogurt. Instead of sour cream or instead of uh, cream fresh, like so many people do. All right. Four fantastic re recipes incorporating avocado. And I know I left a lot of them <laughs> in my mind, <laughs> meaning everybody knows about guacamole, everybody knows about a million, trillion different recipes, but I want to show you a few that are a little different, inspire you a little bit for next time you incorporate avocado to your, to your diet. Avocado is a great spread. It's great, like instead of mayonnaise, it's a great spread. And since we're saying avocado, and we're saying a little bit of gazpacho, I usually do my little pepper on the rim trick to make it look pretty. Because as you know, I like my food to look good. Replacing saturated fat with unsaturated fat can actually assist you in reducing your uh, risk for heart attack. There you got it. My tribute to avocado, one of the most powerful superfoods that I've known. It's so simple what I made today, but it's pretty and has a lot of sex appeal. Look at that. This is my relish, which is absolutely, mm, the flavor comes through it. The crab salad couldn't get any easier than that. The Pacific cream salad speaks for itself. I'm gonna eat one of the shrimp. Mm. And this version of the gazpacho, which is kind of like a salad and a soup, at the same time, to die for. Mm. Avocado is the superfood because of the healthy fat that lowers your bad cholesterols in your system. I hope you had as much fun watching me as I was making it for you. And I encourage you to put avocado into your next menu planning. And think out of the box a little bit. Avocado is so good for you. And I hope to see you real soon on another episode of Silverfoods. I'm Chef Walter Stay.